All right. So I'm excited for this conversation because we're going to be talking about pricing. And pricing is one of those things that really at the end of the day, you have to convince the customer that the value of your product is more than the value of the money in their pockets. And there's a lot of factors that go into that along the way. So I'm excited to bring on um, Ali Babel from Trellis to talk about that. So Ali, thanks for joining us in the Maximizing E-Commerce podcast. Kevin, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Uh, it's a topic that I care about. So it's uh, it's going to be a fun conversation to, to have. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, before it's one that's always kind of fascinating with me and some of the data models that are out there. And yeah. it's probably a little bit more manual, but I was uh, describing, I knew someone who, when I worked for uh, Disney, yeah. that he was hired from, I think it was Best Buy or something like that, where basically he was a pricing analyst and he was telling me like how they would do tests. And some of it like didn't even make sense, like how like yeah. the variables he described and what they came up with. And I'm like, how did you come up with that? But somehow they did. So I guess there's uh, ways of doing this out there that we maybe don't necessarily think of in the uh, Amazon e-commerce world. But before we get into all that, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, uh, I am a previous agency owner and uh, uh, the chief revenue officer here at Trellis. Um, I, my, my raison d'etre is to, to, to help brands grow, um, in that way. And, um, very passionate about solving some of these problems that, uh, we're looking at in the future here as well. Um, and also an avid Toronto Raptors fan, 2019 NBA champion. So we'll throw oh, that nice. in there as a little plug. So, yeah, well, I grew up in Dallas, so I would call myself a Dallas Mavericks fan. Um, Fair enough. They're, uh, <laughs> they had their one championship. I don't even remember what year it was. It was a while ago. Yeah. Back yeah. in the dark I, days. I won't hold it against you. I promise. No, no, no. Totally okay. <laughs> totally okay. Totally okay. But they're, they're, they're not doing so well this year, but um, not such, too bad. such is life. Such is life. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. I know. It, basketball is, is uh, there's more parity than there ever was in the NBA. Um, and so it's nice to, nice to see a bit more competitiveness than before, but, uh, I'll happily hang my hat on the Raptors beating the, the Mavericks, uh, a few days ago. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So in addition to the, uh, Raptors beating the Mavericks, let's talk more <laughs> about why people are here, which is, uh, about pricing and just in general, like, and this yeah. is a hot topic because, and I think a lot of times we just look at it like it's a blank yeah you know the like the old saying of you know when you're trying to write like a blog post or a book or something yeah. there's just the blinking cursor there's kind of just a blinking cursor when you're trying to figure out what your price is now you might think yeah. of like okay here's my costs and i add a certain amount where's my competition but there's so many variables involved and like wh what are some things to even think about when someone's pricing yeah, you, I think you got to think of all of it, right? Like you're looking at your your cost, your landed cost, your shipping costs, your um, your overhead. How do you attribute the the overall um, the employees that you have and the team that you have across various products uh, and that cost line item? Any kind of uh, your advertising spend, your like insert insert everywhere that money goes out in every single brand and factoring that in and to say, okay, well, how do I determine what the right price of my product is, right? Um, and more often than not, exactly what you said. People say these are the costs that I have a semblance of a handle on, and I'm gonna I want to attain X margin, or I think most people kind of go with like a thirty percent or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and you then you say, all right, well, this is my price, and you set up your listing, you um, you throw your price up there, and and you never think about it again. Mm -hmm. And and that's an that's an interesting, always been an interesting kind of like fallacy for me. It's like, well, costs change all the time. And so what do you do when your costs change, right? Like, okay, well, I need to revisit my price or um, in, in there's so many different types of scenarios, right? That exist as to, okay, well, what happens when, um, and you only ever do it based on a business strategy, right? Mm -hmm. um, like what do you, what happens when you need to clear inventory? Mm -hmm. you know, I got to change my price. Um, and what happens when um, you want to, you want to maximize margins. Um, you want to go for more profit. I need to change my price. And so, looking at all the pieces that factor into how you think about your price and the only time that you're often changing your price is a reactionary method, right? Mm -hmm. That I, I business problem here, I need to change prices on products um, to support that that problem or business strategy or business objective. Uh, I need to change my price to support that. 
Um, but that 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 lies in the question. How do you know uh, that your product price is is it too high? Is it too low? Is it just right? How do you actually know? Like, in, in and that this is a good point because there's been this fear I've heard from a lot of people of. Hey, there's yeah. inflation. There's all these pressures the last couple of years of like, you know, shipping container costs or, you know, the cost of the product, the cost of the raw material, yeah. the cost of uh, FBA fees. Everything's going yeah. up, but people are afraid to raise their price in a lot of cases just because they feel comfortable. They probably can't articulate it other than they feel comfortable of where it's at and they're afraid yeah. to change it. It's the devil you don't know. <laughs> Margins are just going down then, right? Like your your profit margin is only going down. All these things are eating into your costs and the lack of certainty um, and the lack of ability and data to answer that question sufficiently of, is my price too high, too low? Is it just right? Um, makes people be like, yeah, I'm just gonna status quo, right? I'm just gonna eat it. I don't wanna cannibalize my sales. There'll be too much of an impact on my business. Um, and that lack of predictability around that change as well, it also creates that too, right? So you end up being in a very precarious scenario where I'm facing margin pressures across the board. Everything's going up. It's costing me more to advertise, um, but I don't want to cannibalize my sales at the end of the day um, by changing my price. Um, and and it, it, it often feels very paralyzing, right? That, okay, how am I going to run a successful business now? What do I do now? Um, but there, it doesn't have to be, um, is kind of the sentiment there as well, right? And um, having the certainty of knowing what those are. And, other industries do this all the time, right? Like you look at an airline ticket, I'm trying to go to Vancouver um, for a wedding and I looked at airline tickets yesterday and they're about a couple, few hundred bucks round trip. Um, I looked at it this, this morning, it was it went up by 150 bucks, right? And what what's changed? It's, it's just demand, right? That outside of probably they're using some sort of technology to track my cookies, which is what everybody thinks now and that's right. common speed, right? Um, but it's it's demand, right? The true, true nature of it is demand that there are less seats available. Um, there are that based on there's less seat. It's just demand as a whole. There's less seats. There could be more people searching for it. Let's go with or the amount of the velocity of sales that happened in the last couple of days, um, the inventory um, account and all that as well. And so you see it with airlines and we're we're so used to it, to be quite frank, as well. Right. <laughs> and, and you see it with like you see and a similar model is also search pricing with Uber, right? Um, you you look at that and you you say okay well there's a higher demand and so price goes up mm. and that's basic economics that we all know low supply high demand price goes up low demand high supply price goes down um, but by how much and what's the right number right and so how do we take that knowledge that other industries the big players like you're talking about there they pulled in that guy from Best Buy uh, to do to be a pricing analyst and determine what the right price is and the right models and all that. Um, but how do you bring that to a brand that often feels like, well, I just need to have a team of, of like, do I need to hire a pricing analyst? Like, am I even getting an ROI on this? Like, what do I even know about all this? How, how do you bring that uh, collective knowledge of what is dynamic pricing already um, into a, a brand that needs to operate that on marketplaces as well and bridging that gap? And, and that's, um, and there's, you know, we've, we've got a way to do it and the analysis there as well, but um, it's, it, it sufficiently is an interesting challenge um, and a shift in the way you think about pricing your products, right? Like um, if, if you know you talk to a few people and more often than not, has anyone given you a different pricing strategy than a cost plus? No, I mean, sometimes the other pricing strategy is if someone's a wholesale yeah. seller, it's yeah. stay within X percent of whoever else is you know, competing for the buy box, it's an FBA seller so that you can get your rotation of the buy box. So it's like, yeah, there's not a lot of like thought on the proactiveness of, and I'm guilty of this where it's like, oh, okay, what's well, the holiday? So I'll just add an extra dollar or something to all my prices or X percent yeah. or whatever the case is. Yeah. And so it's like, it's, it's I, I, interesting. There's there's different schools of thoughts around the holidays. Like, well, people are intentionally buying. So if I raise my price, they're going to buy it anyways. Um, right. Or, or right. And like, but often people are waiting for deals. And so what do you do? And so like, I, I think that the, the, if we understand and look at the reactiveness that we've taken or brands are taking in that way of like, okay, well, I'm sitting on a bunch of inventory. I need to increase my sales volume because I'm getting a shipment coming in or my competitors change their price. And what do I do now? Right. Do I follow? Do I lead? Like, do I go a little bit higher? Like, how do I, 
there's all those things that make you be a bit more reactive. Um, and then you look at that, all of those questions across your entire catalog. Now you start getting into like the paralysis, right? That's where the comfort comes from. Well, everything's status quo. I don't even know where I'd begin to address this, but technology and programmatic dynamic, like programmatic dynamic uh, price changing is really the only, is, is uh, in my opinion, the only solution. There of course is manual ways to do this, but that's time, energy, effort, resources um, that you're not really spending on growing your business in that way then. Um, yeah, exactly. Cause it, 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 sometimes we think that like, okay, I can try all these different things, but then you realize you're spending yeah. time and effort to focus on one thing versus another. And so um, we, we've talked about all these problems you might have with yeah. pricing and whatnot. So then what do you do about it? Yeah. Like it's, there's, at the end of the day, every single one of those solutions is changing your price. And so you, you, I think being changing the conversation from saying that I only change my price based on X happening mm -hmm. um, is, is actually it's to, needs to change towards what is the pricing strategy that I have for each one of my products in any given month? Um, am I looking to clear? Am I looking to kind of move more inventory or optimize for margin mm -hmm. and evaluating it a bit more holistically and actually being conscious of it? Okay. Um, rather than looking at the reactive nature of it. And so tracking all of that, right? Um, whether it's, um, you know, and for uh, tracking every single aspect of that, whether it be like um, your cogs, your margin, getting a good understanding of your actual uh, historical sales data as well at various different price points. Like those are all pretty imperative pieces to have a good basis of. If you don't know your cogs, if you don't know your costs, you don't know, then you don't really have a true picture of your margin. Like that's, that's sufficiently step one, right? Mm -hmm. um, and all two. the little things that come in with that, yeah. that we sometimes forget about, you know, the 50 cents you pay to a prep center to slap a low or a label on or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And because that's all like, depending on the price of your product, that could be quite impactful to your margin, right? Like margins mm -hmm. are percentage game and you got a 50 cent label on a $6 product. All right. Well now all <laughs> that's of a, sudden, a pretty big piece of puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. I think your, your paper is probably worth more than, than the product. Then. Um, yeah. But then you start running it, like tracking all of that, understanding that having a good system in place to truly understand your costs, um, right? Otherwise you're, you're always gonna lose that margin game, but looking then after at your market data um, and, and actually testing that and saying, can we actually, if I increase my price by 5%, 10%, 10% by 3%, by 4%, like what change am I seeing in, in, in the market? Um, are we seeing people buying it more, buying it less? Um, what What's happening to my BSR as a result of that as well? Uh, and how are we actually seeing the changes? And so tracking a few of those metrics there to see by changing my price, what's happening? Um, and then actually looking at it, okay, well, now let's look at what's happening with my advertising as well, right? When I change mm. my price, um, is, is my advertising more efficient? Is there is it less efficient? Um, that's it's kind of putting that Z Z access on this whole thing as well um, and saying, okay, well, what's the intersection point of all of these? Um, and then looking at the competitors too, right? What are my competitors pricing at? How are they doing that? Um, am I, is, is, are, am I in a position to, to even match my competitor pricing, whether it's higher or lower? Um, does my pricing, what does it mean from pricing from a brand perspective? And are you approaching your pricing from saying that, well, I'm a higher tier brand, so I have to price it higher. Um, is that is that sufficiently right um, or or wrong to kind of create that that um, that brand presence or or not? Um, and does that actually matter? Uh, is the other part of that? And then looking at all of that, analyzing that, and doing it every day um, or every few days or every week um, at some frequency that allows you to be able to be ahead of the rest of the market when you're doing that. Um, but tracking that data is the most important, um, and 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 testing as well, right? And building that price profile. Yeah, because the challenge is, unlike the guy who did the test at Disney of like, okay, we pick a couple shops and they both sell Mickey or um, uh, mm -hmm. head headgear or something like that. You know, yeah. they could look and see like, okay, if we change the uh, the price, what is the mix of sales that this ha product has in that yeah. shop? But there's so many more factors on a you know Amazon marketplace, new competition coming in. They're all changing yeah. their prices too. They're changing their bids, all these other factors. So there's there's a, a lot to optimize for, if I'm understanding yeah, this correctly. 
Yeah, there's there very much is right. Are they running promos? Are they running deals? Mm. Um, right. Um, any kind of any any couponing that's happening on top of that as well. How is that going to impact you? Um, do you let that time kind of slide and and let and wait for their coupon to go out for your sales to kind of come back up? Like mm -hmm. understanding your market and understanding your your customer and how they're responding to those changes, um, because with with the with the data that you have around that is is so imperative to success right where the the exactly we said before brands are just facing margin pressures like all from every which way um and so now more than ever in, in the world that we're we're in and the evolution of the amazon marketplace or marketplaces as a whole um, margins are only going down so winning the margin game is very much uh imperative today um like that's mm -hmm. that's you 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 have to control you you have to control your costs you have to know exactly how much is going into what you have to know where you're losing your margin because it's so it's getting tighter and tighter like margins are dropping on on marketplaces year over year um, i think there was a bit of a blip for the pandemic there um but coming out of that it dropped again like right it's 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 kind of like you remove that one anom uh, anomaly data point there um so if if you're not factoring in um what are the opportunities you have even if it's marginal and 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 it's you know pun intended with the word marginal uh, marginal <laughs> improvement on 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 your price marginal that, that's, improvement on margins yeah yeah marginal improvement on margins that's that should be the tagline um, <laughs> then 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 you're 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 leaving it on the table and you're looking to figure out where to get that somewhere else when you actually have that in your hands like mm -hmm. it's so available to you to be able to say. And, and mind you, there's a lot of effort work and whatnot, and that's why I think it's programmatic and there's solutions that exist towards dynamic pricing, but your price is so imperative for you to make sure that you're getting what you need for your business at any given point in time. And keeping it static is not the solution. It, it, is, it was the solution when Amazon, like eight years ago, and how Amazon's notoriously been built, and you could, the beginning of the marketplace where I could source something um, from a vendor, I could sell it on Amazon and work hard and irrespective of my margin there, I could grow a pretty profitable business in that way. But profitable growth in today's in today's space for brands um, is not necessarily bleak. It's more you have to be more intentional with how you're growing and you have to be more intentional with how you're you're spending your time, effort, energy um, and the tools that you're using. Right. You, you can't really win on marketplaces now without leveraging tools. Um, yeah, that's true. And there are definitely so many more tools than there yeah. were when I first started, you know, um, it was, you know, we'll, we'll say jungle scout was one of the first ones where it was like, yeah. so you didn't have to put in 999 units into the cart, which people may or may not know what I'm talking about. There was a trick yeah. where, you know, you put in 999 units into the add to the cart and it would say there's only 52 units left. And then over yeah. time you try to figure out like, OK, how many units are they selling a day? If I do yeah, this yeah. every day at the same time, people literally did that back in 2015. Yeah. Um, but now yeah. there's so many other tools that could help you with that. So with, yeah. with all kinds of things. So, yeah. And how and would how would someone ha pick a tool that would help them with pricing? Um, and so I, I think there's only a few that exist, but moving away from the repricers like the repricers and winning the buy box has its value add it's 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 imperative but that's entirely focused on a wholesale business um, right and you can see winning that right but for brands um actually looking and evaluating from a, a pricing tool that how can i have the 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 most the how can i get like predictability how do i get the data that's important to my business um and my bet and and has always been around predictability turnover how long it takes the simplistic nature of being able to shift towards one pricing strategy or other, whether it's margin or or clearance, um, and as that happens as well. But and, and what what does that mean towards launching new products as well? How do you how do you learn from that? Uh, but the simplistic nature of of how you should choose any tools um, is is that right? Is it does it make it easy for you to attain the things you're looking to do, attain on Amazon or any marketplace for that matter? Um, and 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 it has to work for you, right? And and what you need for your business. Um, because there's so many tools that solve for so many different things um, at this point, um, which I also think is its own inherent problem there as well. But um, are you solving the right problem? Sometimes you have to ask yourself that question. So what problems do you have as a business? Mm -hmm. What knowledge do you have as a business, uh, as an operator? What do people around you have? Is it more cost effective for me to um, 
bring someone on with more knowledge or should I look at tools to help augment that and help support me with the knowledge that I do have, right? Um, and so you're always, there's always this consistent battle between um, and being true to yourself and true to yourself as a brand that I actually, this is the problems that I'm facing. I know nothing about this and I know I need to, I need to figure that out. Is there a tool that will help me? Is there, there's agencies, there's so many different providers in, in various ways from technology to people um, that can help solve some of those problems. Um, and then factoring and not forgetting to factor that into your costs at the end of the day. Um, very easy to lose sight of that in, in the margin game. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot to think about there. So, okay. So now my understanding is Trellis has yeah. a relatively new tool that's not pricing based on how to stay in the buy box. It's pricing based on you could get exactly. different factors to the tool and it'll yeah. pick a price for you. I, I don't want to put words in. Yeah, mind. yeah, no. So the, the understanding is correct. And so the way that we look at it is um, in, we look at your, your getting inputs for you to create a sandbox um, for what it is and how the AI can optimize your price and, and enable dynamic pricing for you. And so um, the sandbox being um, what's the minimum price that you have, what's the maximum price that you have, uh, what's your landed cost, what's your shipping cost. Um, and then as the this, this simplistic nature of it all um, is we actually just have a slider. And so on one end being clearance and on one end being margin, and you have about five individual points between there to choose which way you want to go and what you need for your business, right? And so I think one of the examples we use is clearing out inventory. Okay, I'm probably going to move it over to the volume side here. And, mm -hmm. um, and every time you move that slider, it gives you predictions. And this is what we actually think that this is how much this the AI can will look to move or um, is deter it can deter is determined based on the data and and the modeling that exists um, for the product there. Uh, how much it'll move and in what velocity at what time period at what margin uh, and there's a range uh, a range there um, sufficiently of saying this is kind of there so you have a good idea of that right um, it gives you some concreteness then and so the tool is is as simple as that it's a very simple sandbox we have the ability to track competitors pricing in there as well um, and as they change their price what does that mean um, there's the advertising side of it too and the advertising effectiveness by price um, but all of this is running on a on a, in, on a daily and real time basis, more often than not, um, and learning from the data as more data, more and more data comes in. And so whether you set it to margin or volume or um, anything in between there, it's the, the price will still change um, in its dynamic nature to attain for that pricing strategy. And so you kind of just let it ride. Got it. So, so basically your system, if I'm understanding this correctly, is yeah. allowing you to say, okay, I want to just move units because maybe it's a launch or you're like, I need to clear out of yeah. this product or whatever the case is. So it's not so much pricing based on what's going to get you the best profit, but on the flip side of it, when it, it's, it, or sorry. It actually, yeah, it absolutely can be, right? So you're actually telling the system, uh, the platform and for each of your products, what your pricing strategy is that I want the most profit or I want margin or I want volume. And at every single step of the way, it's actually getting you the most profitable volume, for example, or the most profitable way to clear uh, without leaving money on the table. Uh, and that's so, so at each, it's, it's finding that optimal point at each one of those areas so that you're not priced too high, not priced too low. It's just right uh, for lack of a Goldilocks reference there. <laughs> Well, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, there's, uh, th th there's a lot going on there. So, um, so basically you can optimize for profits. And if you're optimizing for profits, I'm under, if I'm understanding correctly, it's going to figure out like, okay, it, at this price, you have this amount of margin. Yep. And at this price you have more or less margin. So what price is going to bring, for every 10 units or whatever, or during a certain time exactly. period, what's going to give you the most bottom line dollars? Exactly, exactly. And so it'll give you that, it'll give you the number of units sold and a range of the estimation on the units sold. Um, it'll give you it'll give you a range for everything, but it's units sold, sales, your profit, your margin percentage, uh, and your turnover. And so what happens to each one of those whenever you move the slider based on which strategy you want to enable for your product for that month? Got it. Now, do you have... 
fail safes. This is the thing that always makes me nervous. So yeah. every equation has its pluses and minuses. So are there fail safes yeah. like you can put in the floor, never go below this or above That's that? Exactly. And those are the inputs. You have your 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 minimum price, you have your maximum price, um, and it'll never it'll always stay in between those. And so you're you're kind of giving the 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 AI a, um, a sandbox to play within. And say, don't go out of these. Mm. Also, look at these competitors, and they're in the sandbox too. Also, look at my advertising uh, data as well, and what I'm performing best on advertising. Get it all into the sandbox. You're only playing in here, no more, no less. Um, and you know, we're we're adding functionality as you go here as well. But let's say you're running out of inventory. Um, that's like the the thing you just don't want to happen on Amazon, right? Zero inventory. Um, and so ha automatically factoring that in and saying, okay, well, let's, let's, we won't go higher than your maximum price. Mm -hmm. um, but let's, let's, let's try and spread this inventory out for as long as we need. Um, and so there are rules in place and the rules of engagement are ones that you set. Gotcha. Now, one other question I do have that I know some people may have is, okay, if it's maximizing for profit, and this is, this is yeah. a controversial sacred cow for some people is yeah. that it's all about ranking is all about sales volume. So if you lose some sales volume, you're going yeah. to lose sales too. So you may not get enough ranking at whatever the higher, so you may lose positioning. So even though maybe you have a higher price that it doesn't make up for the fact that you will have less opportunities because maybe they give you less favorable impression share because you're not moving as much, which yeah, some of this is still pseudoscience for uh, and gut feelings for a lot of people, but it is yeah, a I'll valid question. I'll, I'll definitely like, I'm, from the time that we launched dynamic pricing um, and kind of keeping track on a, on, on various different customers and seeing the data as it plays out there, like um, we've seen scenarios where they're like, you know, organic ranking being as low as you, as low as possible is kind of the goal here. Right. Uh, your BSR. And so we've seen scenarios where the price has actually gone up um, and their and the BSR has actually like gone gone down um, as a result of people actually buying and, and, and trying to attribute where that comes from. Meaning and, a better BSR. A better BSR. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so we've seen scenarios of that and like that, like, and we're more often than not that pseudoscience gut check always is, well, yeah. we're gonna, but if there's an intermittent, intermittent step that we're going to sell less, um, but mm. you actually don't, you, you don't know that the market is the one that's going to determine how much how much they want to right. buy right and so let's say then that in that scenario and your hypothetical my competitors run out of stock right mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're run out of stock i've got i'm i only have maybe i have majority of the market share available to me at this time it could be a period of four or five days your bsr is going to go up your you can raise your price your bsr is going to go up and your sales are probably going to continue to stay the same right and that's right hypothetically right at that limited supply higher de the demand stay the same right um, price goes up as a result of that and you're offsetting all of that right that the microeconomic and macroeconomic conditions are are related to not just your product but the entire market share um, and demand is the one thing that changes all of that so is there a correlation there absolutely there absolutely is um but the part that doesn't that 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 equation doesn't factor in is what's happening in the market at that point in time um and that's what your your best seller rank is actually factoring in too got it got it okay so yeah there's so many <laughs> yeah that's it almost gets overwhelming when you think about all the different uh pieces there are to the puzzle yeah and that's that's the hard part right like that's that's why, like, you know, if we look at the evolution of the marketplace and what we're talking about and where it started to where it is now, if you're not using tooling at all, you there's no, you know, that maybe you have a math degree or, you know, you have, you're great with numbers mm -hmm. um, and, and it really excites you and it's it passionate, but it, it's hard to, um, it's hard to know which way is right then, right? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, well, should I fact now? Okay, now what do I do? Should I factor in my BSR? Um, should I look at, okay, I need to look at this competitor because that's the most correlated to my product, which is, mind you, what you think, not what your customers think as well. Um, and then, okay, well, now how do I factor in my ad spend and saying, okay, well, if I'm raising my price, should I lower my ad spend? Like making all these decisions and looking at, well, one, collecting all this data manually and then analyzing this data manually and then actioning upon that data and that analysis 
is the most time consuming thing, right? Like, and, and to be honest, like you didn't start selling something on Amazon or your brand to just do do that all the time, right? That mm -hmm. that feels like, okay, well, I just want it to sell is normally this is the most simplistic way that people are, are thinking about it, or I want to do X or I want to do Y. And so if you're not using tooling, like today's marketplaces require you to use tooling. There's there's no way to win without it. Um, and and I, 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 I can't stress that enough, but the, 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 the problem with the tooling that exists today, and this is kind of, you know, um, as we look to the future of that and the part that I'm passionate about and I'm excited about as well, and um, you and I talked about that briefly too, is that, well, all these tools don't talk to each other. And so there's inefficiency mm -hmm. there too, right? That True. your advertising tool not, may not necessarily be talking about your pricing tool, talking with your pricing tool, maybe not be talking with your inventory tool. And so the lack of interconnectedness there is actually creating inefficiency, which is just hitting your margin. Mm. <laughs> right? You end up spending more on one side than you need to on the other. Um, like it's there's you you as a result of that lack of collective learning, you're and and with the amount of data that we get now with Amazon and we're getting more and more in various marketplaces, you're just you're you're kind of just leaving money on the table over and over again, right? That's why. I call today's marketplace and the future of where we're going, like it's all about winning the margin game. Like that's that's really what, what we're doing if you want to profitably grow your e-commerce brand, right? Yeah, that's such a good point. We don't want to just uh, have hope that we're doing well. Yeah. We want to actually do well. So, all right, well, good deal. Well, good deal. Well, this has been a, a very interesting conversation and yeah. um, I'm... Uh, curious to learn more so for folks who do want to learn more where would they go uh you can take a look at gotrellis.com um and, and click on dynamic pricing there that has a bunch of information about that uh, about it as well um there's also a few blog posts that talk specifically about this and determining your price um how to price uh, amid inflation as well and entering kind of the times that we're into um and what your price means there but um, there's some interesting topics there that we're we're talking talking about to to help cover and solve the problems that brands are facing. Awesome, well, Ali. This was an interesting conversation on a a topic that I don't think it's enough uh, airtime. Absolutely, you and I both. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks for having so me. Really appreciate, appreciate it, Kevin. It.